OK, as Marble Halls goes back into his position, let's go to John Russell for the big one, the Caulfield Cup. Ends up well, Might and Power makes a good line. Peep on the slide. Always aloof, they're just about ready for the 1997 Foster's Caulfield Cup. Stand by for a start. Line good. Ready to run. Down about to roar. All set. Away from a great start in the Caulfield Cup. And down on the inside, one of the first to jump is the Dad Magic of Sydney. Marble Horse dropping back along the inside. Might and Power is prominent coming across from the outside. Day Rabay. Sweet Delight up in the leading group being followed closely a bit further back by Iron Horse and now Sumoa and Magnet Bay on the outside of Markham as they pass the Judge Catalan opening back along the inside of Bonsai Pipeline. Ebony Grove further back in the field and they were followed closely by Peep on the Sly. Doremus is third, last two lengths further back as Sky Bow and last of all Count Shivers sweeping onto the side and the leader here Might and Power a half length to Day Rabay a length and a half further back Sweet Delight on the outside of Magic of Sydney two lengths further back in the field then came Always Aloof being followed closely by Marble Horse on the rails uh, three off the rail they're going around them is our Sumo followed by Iron Horse a length further back is Esther Dad over on the inside Catalan opening a length and a half further back Magnet Bay being followed by Markham and Bonsai Pipeline together they're followed by Peep on the Sly is over on the inside of Ebony Grove Doremus is well back in the field. Next to last is Count Shivers and Sky Bow is last of all as they race up the hill. Might and Power in charge. Leading about a length and a half. Day Rabay is second. Magic of Sydney on the inside is third. They're followed closely then by Iron Horse and back in behind them. Sweet Delight. Marble Halls on the rails. A length and a half further away came Always Aloof followed by Catalan opening. Over on the outside the now Sumo Istadad is in behind the Magnet Bay. They're followed by Bonsai Pipeline. A length further back is Markham followed closely by Ebony Grove. A fair way back in the field. Doremus on the outside of Pete on the sly followed by Sky Bow and Count Shivers is last of all they're on the railway side Might and Power still the leader about a length in advance of Day Rabay followed by Iron Horse and Magic of Sydney Sweet Delight there goes Always Aloof around the outside of the stable mate Marble Halls on the rails followed by Easter Dad Catlin opening is making ground followed by our Sumo a length and a half further back Magnet Bay Bonsai Pipeline followed by Ebony Grove going forward followed by Markham Sky Bow a long way back in the field Count Shivers and Peep on the sly is last of all this leader Might and Power making a merry bid for victory coming up towards the home turn got away by length and a half all was aloof around the outside iron horses in the picture day rabay followed by magic of sydney marble halls blocked away on the inside as they straighten up might and power is the leader he's well clear might and power got away three or four lengths in advance of always aloof and ebony grove coming down the outside then iron horse and marble halls from a long way back but might and power well clear 150 meters left to go he's six lengths ahead marble halls along the inside is dead in the clear doremus down the outside finishing on strongly but might and power has bolted him with a coffee Cup. He wins by eight lengths, Doremus second. Good go for third, Catalan opening will mark them. They're followed by Istadad. Further back, Marble Halls, followed by Ebony Grove, and back in behind the Magnet Bay and Sweet Delight. Peep on the sly, always aloof, Count Shivers. Well back in the field, Sky Bow Iron Horse, our Sumo, Daira Bay, Magic of Sydney, and Bonsai Pipeline has run last. Well, he's promised to crash into the top group of Australian racehorses, and he did it today. TAB number 13, Might and Power, and what a trot jumping Jimmy Cassidy is having the pumper. He won last week's Caulfield Stakes on Falonte and now he wins on Might and Power for Jack Denham and one of Jack Denham's biggest race wins on number 13, Might and Power. Thank you, Ken. The BMW Cox Plate for 1997 under starters orders. Off they go. And the roar from the crowd almost lifted the roof off the stand when they bounded out of the barrier. Tan Per Lane is in front early and he's going to race a bit hard down the straight. And Counter coming over from his outside gate is going up. He's in third spot now as Falante pokes up on the fence into second posse. A bit more than two to Dane Ripper on the outside of Alpha. Juggler is next as they go out of the home straight and further back in the field then came uh, Viali. Second last is Schubert and Moss Downs on the fence as last as they head down past the 1600 metres mark and Tarn Per Lane is a surprise leader wants to get his head up a little bit and led by two lengths to Falante who looks to relax beautifully in second spot in counter third has Alpha in the pocket a length away Dane Ripper juggler on the fence on the inside of Viali and the last couple of Moss Downs and Schubert and the pace is very very muddling as they swing into the back straight they've got 1100 metres to go in the BMW Cox Plate and Tarn Per Lane speeding up a little led by a bit more than two to Falante three quarters to encounter two to Alpha and a half length away on the outside is his stable mate Dane Ripper 
followed by Viali on the outside of Juggler. And back at the tail of the field, Moss Downs and Schubert with Larry Cassidy starting a forward move now on Schubert. Down the back straight, approaching the 800 metres mark. Tan Per Lane is the leader. Falante second, going cosily. Encounters about to take off three deep under his lightweight. Schubert is four wide now. Alpha in the all orange on the inside of Dane Ripper. And then Viali followed by Juggler and Moss Downs is back last, but they're packing up tightly. About six lengths covers the field, and it's Schubert on the extreme outside making a lightning move with Encounter. They've raced up to join Falante. Falante, Encounter, and Schubert come around the turn together. Alpha is flat to the boards. Dane Ripper running a bit of a race, followed by Viali. Into the straight, Falante with the inside running's a half length on Encounter. Will the 10 kilogram pull in the weights make the difference? Falante just in front, Encounter trying to get to him. Dane Ripper getting the rails run further out is Viali. It's Dane Ripper, the bolter, the despised outsider. Dane Ripper got right along the fence and came away to win the BMW Cox Plate in a boil over. Falante has run second. Encounter might just get third in front of Viali Schubert, followed by Moss Downs. Further back is Alpha, who was beaten at the 800. Tan Per Lane dropped right out of it. And Juggler has run probably the worst race of his life to finish last in the BMW Cox Plate. And Bart Cummings is a genius. A man who's already etched his name in history, champion jockey Roy Higgins. As we look at our selections, always aloof, Marble Hall's Alpha Doremus. Roy Higgins, you've won the cup twice. What did you like? I've gone with Aloof Friedman to run the Cornella in 15 Marble Halls and two Doremus. Now, that's a big statement because Jenny Chapman stepped him to always aloof, which is his third runner. I did like the look of Ebony Grove and Alpha, so good luck. Good luck to you too, Roy. Roy Higgins, champion jockey, and now from Sport 927. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the nation is now officially at a standstill for a horse race. But not just any horse race, it's the Foster's Melbourne Cup. They're running it for the 137th time, and to call it, Dan Maliki with him, former champion jockey Gary Willis. Well, the atmosphere certainly built up here, uh, Petty, you can hear it even coming up here. But, oh, gee, these horses look well, might and power. It's just that query, I think, that they uh, hasn't stopped anyone backing him in the ring. But he is uh, certainly looks the part. He's had come up the straight. He looked beautiful during his plumbery. The other horse I thought looked very well was Ebony Grove. He was nice and relaxed, very cool. The two visitors, Arabian Story, Harbour Jews, both looked very well. Sky Bow, always aloof. You can just keep naming him. There is uh, Ebony Grove on camera there. Oh, Count Shivers just went past him then. But by gee, uh, it's hard to step one right on the dot, isn't it, uh, Dan? I was uh, impressed by the two English horses, uh, particularly Harbour Dews, he looked fantastic, and the grey Arabian story, which will be very easily identified. It's the only grey in the field, Gary. And the last couple are moving into line. Count Shivers to go up. Might and Power will run the favourite. Currently $5.80 for the win. We just need to get that bit of cover for the first half mile of the race, I think, Dan, for Might and Power to win it. And Ebony Grove about to come up, starting from the outside barrier, number 22. He's a beautiful Iraq horse, uh, Ebony Grove. And he'll come up to the outside gate. All set to go, the 1997 Foster's Melbourne Cup. And they're ready for a start now. Away they go, the gates have crashed back and the big one is underway. Ebony Grove immediately snagged back to the tail of the field with Count Shivers. Might and Power, one of the best to jump away with Marble Halls. Magnet Bay, crying game was up there in the early part. Likewise, Court of Honour, a little further out to Viali and also Sunny Lane's going forward early. Linesman's a bit wide about midfield at the moment, but it is going forward in the race. Always aloof was midfield, wider out then was Sapio, scrupulous getting back with Skybow along the inside of Doremus and Ebony Grove is two lengths away at the tail. As they come down the straight the first time and the leader is the favourite and that is Might and Power. Crying Game is going up to second, Linesman is three out but been hunted forward now. Marble Halls was over on the rails, around him was the mayor Sunny Lane and then Court of Honour followed by Viali. Yobro was next on the inside, around it was Sapio. A length further back than a magnet bay, they've got a circuit left to travel. Markham's about midfield on the rails. Always aloof, three deep on the outside of Arabian Story. Next on the inside was Grand Master. Bonsai Pipeline is four wide around Harbour Dews, Alpha, and Count Shivers on the rails. Then came uh, Doremus, Alpha got a bit of a check there.
Sky Bowers back to the rear of the field in between Ebony Grove, the fence, and Scrupulous out three wide. They've got 2,000 metres left to travel in the cup now, and the leader is Might and Power. The favourite Might and Power by two lengths. Marble Hall's racing with his mouth wide open on the inside. Crying Game goes around Linesman now. Crying Game gets to second, Linesman third, fourth the inside Marble Halls. And then Court of Honor getting a nice run on the inside of Yo Bro. A length and a half further back than a sunny lane around the outside of Viali and on the rails was Markin. Then Magnet Bay won off the fence. Around it was Sapio and out there four wide was Bonsai Pipeline, Grandmaster midfield on the rails. Then came Count Shivers. Winder out on the track there was always aloof. Arabian Story, the grey in the centre. A length further back in the field, two were Doremus. And then came Viali. A length and a half further back, two Ebony Grove. Harbour Jews was about sixth last, but three wide. Alpha's back to third last from Skybow. And Scrupulous at the tail of the field. They've got 1,200 left to travel. And Might and Power is the leader. He's three quarters of a length in front of Crying Game. Two lengths away, third was Linesman. He's going up on the outside of Marble Halls. Just behind those was Court of Honour. Then came Viali, a length further back than a Harbour Jews. Over on the inside was Markham going forward. Yobro got to about fifth. Markham in between runners. Off the track was Sapio. Over on the inside, Grand Master as they start to bunch up behind the leaders. It's Might and Power now being tackled by Linesman. A length and a half away, Yobro on the outside of Marble Halls now being called on. Around the outside, Sunny Lane, Sapio and further back, Arabian Story. Linesman, he's putting the pressure on on the turn. It's Might and Power the inside end. Linesman together as they straighten up in the Foster's Melbourne Cup of 1997. And Might and Power, he got away again, the fave. He's a length in front. Linesman won't lay down. Grandmaster runs on and here's Doremus. Doremus with a run. Then came Markham and Sapio. Might and Power, the leader, 250 to go. Doremus is after him. Might and Power led a length and a half to Doremus. Then Linesman, Might and Power, the leader. Doremus is coming at him. Doremus after Might and Power. Might and Power and Doremus, they hit it. Oh, it's close. Doremus runs. Doremus runs on the outside. Can he have done it a second time? It's a photo in the Melbourne Cup. Doremus and Might and Power. Close up behind them, Linesman with half. Robert Hughes and Markham. Then Arabian Story, Skybow, Ebony Grove, Grandmaster, Sapio, Magnet Bay, Court of Honor, always aloof. Then Scrupulous, Viali, Marble Halls, Yobro, Sunny Lane, Bonsai Pipeline, Crying Game, Count Shivers and Alpha. I don't know, Dan. I thought Might and Power might have just stuck And he's hung on. Might and Power's won it. Number oh, yes. three. <laughs> I thought he might have. Well, what a brilliant ride. Number three's won it. Well, I think Greg Hall thought he'd won it because he raised his whip in salute. But in a bobbing go, it's Might and Power. Number three has won the Melbourne Cup from two to Remus, Greg Hall. And third placing will go to number 16, Markham. Three, two and 16. What an absolute thriller. Incredible. Bob of the head. And it was Might and Power whose nose went down on the line. And he's won. And I dare say half a stride before and half a stride after it was Doremus. And I'm sure Greg Hall thought he'd won it. Oh, definitely. But I just uh, sort of thought, I, you know, he's a big horse. Jimmy Cassidy had cuddled, cuddled, cuddled his horse. And here he's really going for him. And Might and Power really responded. Here's Doremus. He's got up outside linesman. And this is where it really got interesting. I thought, can Might and Power just hold on? Here's and Johnny here he Letts. He's got the 1997 Melbourne Cup winning jockey, Jim Cassidy. Come in, come in. Do what he's done. That's Jim Cassidy coming back to scale. The horse has won the call for the Melbourne Cups. He kicked away on the turn there, Gary. Oh, incredible. But uh, what the, uh, when I came out of the barrier, Jimmy just concentrated and concentrated to try and get him to settle. And he cuddled and cuddled him all the way down past the winning post. And then along the back, I thought uh, crying game was you know, going to make it a bit hard for him. But he just let him give him a bit of rain. It was a beautiful front-running ride. And when he sort of straightened up, Linesman was the first to challenge him. He sort of shook him off. And then Doremus just came at him. And uh, I, I sure I agree with you. Greg Hall, I think, thought he'd got up. But I was watching it. And I just happened to glance. And I just thought Mike and Parrot stuck that big, long neck out. But uh, it was ju just... Just too close, just the bob of the head, John Letts. Yeah. Oh, fellas, you've never seen a more ecstatic jockey 
in your life than Jimmy, Jimmy Catholic. Jimmy, what a great year it's been for the Portfield Cup and now the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. This horse is a champion. He is an out and out champion. And, and Jimmy, like you were taken on from the half mile when Linesman went up there. Yeah, they come up, they started roaring, and I said, that wouldn't worry me. And Sydney, you know, that's the first time that I've ever tried to interview a jockey. Greg Hall thought he won the race, and then your number went up, and, oh. and you nearly jumped out. Just waited for the number. What a great thrill, mate. What a horse. I love the horse. Well, you win this for Jack Denham is just unbelievable. Jimmy, you've deserved it. You've been through a lot of hard times in the last couple of years, but this topped it all, mate, doesn't it? The well, big one. The plan is, Betsy, don't lay down, mate. You never that's have, have you? I went show jumping and they taught me one thing, go out and go out. Downs a little bit tardy, Vitronite allowed to amble out of the gates and he's going to settle well back in the field. Might and Power bounced out in front of Intergaze who wants to race early. Craig Carmody trying to steady him up at the girth of Might and Power. Gull Guru drops onto the fence third, followed by Court of Honour. And then Dane Ripper, delinquent on the fence, Moss Downs three deep and Vitronite last as they head down past the 1600 metres mark. Into the back straight and there goes Might and Power. Winner of the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups last year, he is a dashing front runner. Might and Power at the 1400 mark goes out to lead by five lengths to Moss Downs on the outside of Intergaze. Three to Gold Guru on the inside of Court of Honour. Two to Dane Ripper on the outside of Delinquent. Two lengths away is one of the three year olds, Vitronite. Down the back stretch at the 1200 mark, Jimmy Cassidy gives Might and Power a breather. Might and Power by two to Moss Downs on the outside of Intergaze as Cassidy slows up and stacks them up behind him. Court of Honour running fourth. For Followed by Gold Guru and then Dane Ripper, followed by Delinquent and Vitronite last 12 off the lead, and Jimmy's off again on Might and Power. Stop start tactics. We haven't seen a ride like this for years in a wait for age race. Might and Power by a length and a half to Moss Downs, two to Intergaze, two and a half to Court of Honor, followed by Gold Guru, Dane Ripper, and then Delinquent and Vitronite. Now the Kiwi Moss Downs is throwing down the gauntlet to Might and Power. They're level pegging as they come to the turn. Two lengths away, flat to the boards, Intergaze. Gull Guru is also hard at it. And then Court of Honour followed by Delinquent Dane Ripper. Five deep on the turn. Vitronite last into the straight. Around the corner, Moss Downs takes an arrow lead from Might and Power. A length away into Gaze running on. Gull Guru pulled to the outside. York is looking for a passage on Delinquent as they come down to the 200. Might and Power fighting back. Got his head in front again. On the outside is Gull Guru. Delinquent blocked for a run. Vitronite is getting up near the fence. Gull Guru hits the lead. Might and Power coming again. Gull Guru too good though and Gull Guru coming away on the line beat Might and Power Jimmy Cassidy's daring tactics almost paid off Vitronite will be third delinquent fourth didn't have a lot of luck in the straight followed by Moss Downs then Dane Ripper from Court of Honour and Intergaze as weakened to finish at the tail of the field with Simon I think Might and Power will prevail uh, juggler Stephen King riding him today Stephen rode him when he won the group one Caulfield Stakes season okay they're all in let's go to Johnny Tap for this group one classic Righto, Ken, ready for the Cathay Pacific Queen Elizabeth. Off and running in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes, and Might and Power has been bustled out of the gate by Brian York, but he's not going to get the lead too easily. Juggler striding up on the outside, and Champagne is hunting up on the fence, and we've got a line of three early. Might and Power wants to over-race a bit now in the run to the first corner, led by about three-quarters to Juggler. Stephen King takes hold. The old boy wants to put the head up in the air in second place. Champagne is running third, followed by Danamora on the inside of last year's winner into gaze and two lengths away the Doncaster winner Catlin opening who didn't participate in the early battle. Might and Power now forges to the front going down the back straight led by two and a half to Juggler over racing he's got his mouth wide open on the outside of Champagne three lengths away Danamora a half to into gaze pulling a bit and a length and a half Catlin opening who's asleep at the tail of the field. Going up to the top turn at the 1100 mark Might and Power led the pace as a cracker. He's two and a half in front of Juggler who won't let him get too far away. In third place dropping off a bit now, Champagne, the pace is furious. Followed by Danamora ahead away into Gaze and two to Catlin opening as they swing around the top turn. Coming to the crossing at the 800 Might and Power by two and a half to Juggler. Stephen King is keeping Might and Power well in his sights. Two to Champagne being niggled a bit by Greg Childs. Followed by into Gaze, Danamora and Catlin opening is now pushing between horses. He's had a lovely quiet run in the race so far. Coming to the 600 metres mark, Might and 
power. Two and a half to Juggler. Champagne is still there. Catlin opening, getting to fourth as they near the turn. And then Danamora into gazes under heavy pressure at the tail of the field. Might and power leads for home. Might and power is about six off the fence, led by four lengths to Champagne getting to second. Juggler's gone. Catlin opening running on gamely, but might and power is a mile in front coming to the 200. He's put five lengths on Champagne. He's breaking their hearts. In third place, Catlin opening. Juggler really struggling. But ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the new star of the Australian turf. Might and power making them look like second raters down to the line. Nine lengths, I'd say. Champagne second. Catlin opening third. Juggler fourth. Danamora fifth. And Intergaze has pulled up at the tail of the field in the Cathay Pacific Airways Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Well, John Tapp said it all. He just blew them away. Look at him go. The further they went, the further he won by. Simon, he's a pretty good horse. Is he? This will be like the Melbourne Cup when they jump. Set. The light is on. Waiting for Spirit of Oregon and Vitaman. Might and power face as well. Oh, I like him's going off in the gate beside him. Oh, Vitaman's toey. They steady. They're off and racing. And to the roar of the crowd, Might and power to the inside was one of the first to go. And York clicked him up in the early part. In second spot, Summer Bow, Vita Man, Spirit of Oregon coming down the outside from I Like Him and into Gaze, but at the line the first time, Might and Power is the leader. Spirit of Oregon on his outside to the turn out of the straight, and there two and a half in front of Summer Bow on the inside of Vita Man. Two lengths away, I Like Him, followed by into Gaze, Samojo on the fence, a length away, Sapio, followed by Gentle Wind, Marble Hall's ridden back off the speed today in front of Fatal, and last of all is Shindig. Spirit of Oregon went to the front at the 1400 metres mark, Might and Power about to come off the fence in second spot. Two lengths away, Summer Bow, third on the inside of Vitaman. I like him as fifth in a gaze as sixth over racing, just a touch. Samojo, seventh on the fence. Sapio's in eighth position, followed by Gentle Wind on the outside of Marble Halls. A length away, Fatal, and last of all is Shindig. Down the back, 1,100 metres to go. Spear of Oregon on the fence, about ahead to Might and Power over racing, just a touch. In third spot, Summer Bow. He's camp right on the champ's hammer on the inside of Vitaman. A length away, I like like him, two lengths away into gaze on the outside of Samojo, a length and a half to Sapio, followed by Marble Halls and Gentle Wind, Shindig and Fatal on the side of the track, 700 to go Spur of Oregon, the leader Might and Power on his outside and now they're putting on the pressure, two and a half to Summer Bow, followed by Vitaman, I like him, into gaze is starting to make ground, then Samojo, Sapio, Marble Halls, followed by Fatal, Gentle Wind and Shindig, Might and Power hit the front at the top of the straight, York's riding him very hard, into gaze is coming on the outside Outside, so is Summer Bow, and I like him. Mighty Power turned for home at the 300. Intergaze is coming after Might and Power. I like him in the middle, then Summer Bow. Might and Power in front. He's a length over. Intergaze trying hard, and I like him in the middle. Might and Power, the leader, 100 to go. Intergaze, Might and Power in front. He's pulling out plenty. He's a champion, all right, Might and Power. He won the cup. Might and Power beat Intergaze. Third, I like him. Fourth, Marble Halls. Then came Samojo. The next time, Sapio, followed by Gentle Wind, Summer Bow. A long way back, Spirit of Oregon, Vita Man, followed by Fatal, and last time is Shindig. Well, not quite the horse he's been in recent runs, but still, still victorious, still good enough to get the cash. There was a bit of a scare at the top of the straight when York went for the whip, but like all good horses should, Might and Power found plenty, and at the post he was going better than they were. Number four, Might and Power finds plenty under the whip, gets away here from I like him intergaze down the outside intergaze found heaps under hard riding from Craig Carmody and here I'd say he's within two lengths of the champ but he couldn't quite go on with it and might and power kept finding and he goes away over the last 150 meters to win well I'd still say decisively one and a half thousand witnessed a cracker at Waverley Richmond jumping to a 34 point quarter time lead over St Kilda contest Nicky on the right foot and goal there were some classic goals from both sides. Richardson doing the rover. You're kidding. Oh, he has oh, oh, oh. You're too tall to do that, son. Richardson's one of the year's best as the Tigers' lead was reduced to just three points at the last change. Holland steps out. Well done, centre-half forward. Great.
However, the Saints stormed home, booting six goals to one in the final term to win by 27 points to be one game clear in second place. Before the race, Dyer predicted he'd come home strong, and that's exactly what he did. Star covers bursting through on the inside of Yobro. Cronus gone. Praise and Deed's the outside. Yobro, Star covered and Praise and Deed. Yobro and Praise and Deed will fight it out. Praise and Deed's got the Yobro. Praise and Deed, I think. Dyer finishing the season in the best possible fashion, forced to run three deep for most of the race. Many considered the win a minor miracle. They're ready. They're about to go in the BMW Cox Plate. Here's Greg Miles. Kenwood Melanie's linked in, and Northern Drake will complete the lineup for the Cox Plate. Crowd already starting to roar. They're set. <laughs> Off for the Cox Plate. Might and power, if anything, missed at a half length. Tycoon Lil Di look had a look over, and he shot the mare straight to the front ahead of uh, Might and Power. There's Kenwood Melody. The three year old zips up very fast on the outside to join the leader. Di looking around, wanting someone to go to the front, I think. Might and power switches three deep. Super Slew four wide turning out of the straight, and Batavian just behind them from Northern Drake. Might and power let go and moved up on the outside at the 1600 metres. Di let him go, and Might and power led Tycoon Lil, one of the sit on him, sits back two links away. Kenwood Melody the outside, Batavian, Tooling, Super Slew, fifth, and then Dracula. Northern Drake next from Gold Guru, Dodge third to last from Catlin opening, and Old Doremus last of all. The Cox Plate field heads to the 1200 turn, and Might and Power by a length and a quarter. Shane Dye staying off the fence on Tycoon Lil, second into that bottom turn. Batavian is third, ahead to Kenwood Melody, two links to Dracula. Super Slew on the outside of him, about four links further back, Northern Drake and Gold Guru. One further back is Dodge, Catlin opening, and Doremus last of all. 1,000 metres to go, and Might and Power by two links to Tycoon Lil. Three quarters away, third on the inside is Batavian, one to Kenwood Melody. The fellow three-year-old Dracula on length and a half behind it, and then Super Slew, two links to Northern Drake and Gold Guru. One to Dodge and Catlin opening, and one to Remus, 15 off the leader. Might and Power comes down the side in the Cox Plate and leads by two links to Tycoon Lil. A length and a half to Kenwood Melody, and they're followed by Batavian, two Dracula, Northern Drake, Gold Guru, Dodge, Super Slew's dropping out quickly. Catlin Opening is second last, and now Doremus has gone past it, coming up towards the turn 400 to go, and the pumper gets to work on the big champ, and it's Might and Power, the leader. Kenwood Melody going to second around Tycoon Lil when they corner, and then Batavian, and next is Northern Drake and Dodge. Might and Power comes around the home corner, the leader. He's kicked out by two. Northern Drake is chasing home hard on the outside after the leader, and Tycoon Melody battling strongly. It's Might and Power, the leader. Northern Drake a length and a half away, coming home, but Might and Power, the big champ, the King joins the greats of the turf and Might and Powers won it from Northern Drake. Third home is Tycoon Lil. Then came Dodge, Cattle and Opening, Dracula. Next to finish was Doremus and Gold Guru, Batavian, Kenwood Melody, and last of all is Super Slew. Well, he did it. The champ did it. The first horse since Father to win a Cox Plate after the Melbourne Cup. Number one, Might and Power, $1.90, $1.30. Number eight, Northern Drake. Wow, what a run. He looked like winning for a bound, $14.10. And number nine, Tycoon Lil, $2.10. What a thrilling Cox Plate. Might and Power, Northern Drake, Tycoon Lil. All credit to Jack Denham, all credit to Jimmy Cassidy. This super horse, the best modern day horse. Cassidy's riding him here, he's pumping. Northern Drake started to come for Greg Childs. Cassidy got the whip out again. Get going, fella, he said. And you watch him salute as he hits the winning post. Second last year on Falonde. Yo, beauty, says Jimmy, as he goes across the line to win. Now, let's just stop them here and we'll point out the horses. There, of course, is the winner, Might and Power. Now, out here is Northern Drake with the red cap. Just inside of him is Kenwood Melody. Catlin opening is gone. Tycoon Lil is struggling, so just watch the two circled horses. Might and Power on the inside as we roll it, and Northern Drake out in the uh, the centre of the, the track. Straight into second place now, Northern Drake behind Tycoon Lil. But son, pressure's going to come. He ducks in a little bit, and Might and Power, he doesn't weaken. He keeps going, and Might and Power goes on to win the BMW Cox Plate from Northern Drake and Tycoon Lil. Wowee. Jim Cassidy salutes the crowd as he wins the Cox Plate on Might and Power. There is a head-on Might and Power in the white cap, the cerise-coloured sleeves. Tycoon Lil ducks behind him in the turquoise and cerise-quartered cap. That's Catalan opening in the black and white check. 
Batavian back on the rails in the white and orange. And I might tell you that the jockey is dismounted from the roughy super slew who pulled up sore. Here's Darren Biedman. Stand up, Jack. Come on. Stand up, mate. We, we have uh, the winning trainer up here with us, Jack Denham. Um, he's agreed to have an interview with us, and thanks very much, Jack. Um, how are the emotions inside here running now? Very easy now. It must have been uh, the frustration, the relief to be able to win this race after being beaten twice, but um, obviously it's a big thrill. Yeah, that's the one I wanted, Darren. Yeah. That's it. Why is this race so special to you, Jack? Well, I've been beaten the last twice here. Yeah. Mm. You must be very proud of Alan. Yeah, well, he's done a very good job. Yeah. Very good job. Yeah. He's down here and he deserves all the credit. Yeah. Well, go down and enjoy it, Jack, and congratulations. Yeah, whatever you think of Jack Denham, whether you like his nature or you don't, you must give him great credit today for his effort in training this Cox Plate winner, Might and Power. The modern day champ as Jimmy Cassidy stays there with Simon Marshall. Good on you, Pumper. Thank you very much, Kenny. Well, very elated, Jim Cassidy. It's all over Beethoven. And they say that uh, we're legends of mate, Jimmy. And today, mate, you've just become that after the Caulfield, Melbourne Cup, now the Cox Plate. Well done. Yeah, what a buzz to win the three, Simon. He's won the three. Probably the only horse to lead all the way in the three big ones and win them. Yeah. Jimmy, some of the situations up. You just had to come three right around the first bend. But uh, once you got to the front, let's tell us about coming down the side here as we're coming back to this huge crowd at Mooney Valley. Oh, look, he relaxed beautiful. They tried to deal it up to me and there was no way I was going to cop it and go back inside. It was just a matter of getting out. I wanted to lead at all costs, you know? Yeah. I can dictate the race and do what I like in front. Jimmy, you swung around the half mile bend there, straightening up along the school where the pressure mounts here in a cox plate. How were your thoughts there? So, I mean, you can actually see me look at the 800 metres. I looked across at the marker and I thought, this is where the race is going to start, boys. Let's go. And you turned for home, Jim. The crowd started roaring. It was great atmosphere where I was sitting. What about yourself? Did you happen to hear them at all? I could hear them. I could almost hear him coming to the five when he was rolling in front, you know. This has got to be great for Jack Denham, Jimmy. Oh, look, fantastic for Jack. I've won the three for Jack. I'm wrapped. Well done, Pump. Congratulations. Go off a little bit. The crowd love you, mate. They love a champion. We got him here in Australia. He's the best in the world. This is Martin Power and Jimmy Cassidy coming back. Probably a record crowd at Mooney Valley, Ken. Well, there it is. The crowd, the reception for Might and Power. The crowd really yelled themselves hoarse. Not one person, not one person has left their positions in the stand as they cheer this great champion. Looks magnificent. I reckon he's improved from the Cox Plate. All set to go. Gates crash back. Away they go now. Bolter, in fact, the first out from Might and Power. Bridalman going up in the centre from Oregon Star Enjoyment and New Kingston settling down last. But the favourite, Might and Power, by the winning post the first time, has taken the lead. Bridalman running second. Third was Bolter. Asked to be three wide, though, heading out of the straight the first time. Enjoyment tracking through on the rails behind Might and Power. And then Oregon Star and two lengths away, New Kingston. Might and Power is able to set the speed that suits him best as they head along the back of the 2,000 metres. And it's Might and Power in front by a half a length. Bolter up to second, a length and a half away. Bridal Man had dropped back down to the rails. Oregon Star fourth, a length away, Enjoyment. And a length away, New Kingston, last of the six. And only about five or six lengths off the lead. 1,800 metres left to go, and Might and Power settles down well. He leads three quarters of a length to Bulter. Nobody really pestering him either. Third is Bridal Man, fourth Oregon Star. Fifth is Enjoyment, and New Kingston, last of the six runners. Heading up towards the 1,500 metres, and Might and Power travelling cozily in front by a length. Bulter sitting second, third on the inside, Bridal Man. Oregon Star with some cover fourth, about two lengths away enjoyment, and New Kingston on the outside of it at the tail of the field, but no more than five lengths off the lead. Along the back of the course they head, 1,300 left to go, and Might and Power by a length. Bolter second, Bridal Man third the inside. Oregon Star fourth, a length and a half to enjoyment, who's fifth on the inside of New Kingston. So the order has changed little throughout the race, going inside the 1,000 metres, and it's Might and Power by half a length to Bolter. Third on the inside, Bridal Man from Oregon Star. Two lengths away, Enjoyment, and New Kingston on its outside. They're starting to wind it up, though. The pace just uh, quickening a little. They've got 800 left to go, and Might and Power is half a length in front of Bolter. Oregon Star easing out three wide. Bridal Man fourth on the inside from New Kingston. 
and enjoyment as they work up towards the turn. They've got 600 metres to go. And Might and Power will turn for home in front of Bulter. In third spot, Oregon Star, Bridal Man, the inside of enjoyment. And New Kingston as they enter the straight. Might and Power just shifting away from the rails. The leader from Oregon Star, Bridal Man going up on the fence. And then Bulter enjoyment and New Kingston. But the pumper getting to work on Might and Power. And he starts to extend. Might and Power a length and a half to Oregon Star. Then Bulter, Bridal Man, enjoyment. And New Kingston. But look at him go. He's the might. He's the power and the glory of Australasian gallops. Might and power extending. He's a modern day champion. Might and power streaks away and wins at six lengths. Oregon Stars run second, third, Bulter. Then came Bridal Man from enjoyment. And last over the line, New Kingston. Well, what a great horse. But Dan, I know they're great horses, but you've got to ride them good. And gee, I, like I, I always think Jimmy Cassidy's got one of the best set of hands on a horse I've ever seen. And he was able to just let him come out. I know he's a champion, but he just let him, had him, he, he rated the race to perfection. And when he let him down, you could see that great acceleration, you know, from the, about the 300 metre mark. He really asked him for his effort. Here he's just going to let him down now. That's Oregon Star. And he's just sort of let him down here, let him stride. Gives him a click up here, and away he goes. That great, you know, he's got a bit of a high action, but boy, does he get over the ground. And he's a super horse. But, you know, I always used to love watching Mick Dipman ride. I think Mick had great hands, and this guy's the same. They've, they've, they can just get horses to settle. And, uh, you know, he's just a super horse. Well, they weren't really the, the class opposition that he's been meeting in the wait for age races, but. Because of that, they were getting well over a stone to a stone and a half pull in the weights, and he left them standing still almost as if yeah. they were nailed down to the floor oh, over the last 300 metres. Here's a great action shot of him. Jimmy just, you know, riding him along hands and heels. And he just extended beautifully. That's what great horses can do. When I was riding Manakata, he used to be able to get them go. Well, I know Johnny Letts is with Jim Cassidy. Oh, Peter Donegan's got the winning owner, I think. Yes, I have, Gary, and I was just going to say to you one thing. I don't mind admitting I had a bit of a tear in the eye then. Yeah, Pete, it's hard to hold back. Yeah. It's just fabulous to see the reception this horse got. We were nervous in the race. Were you nervous? You're always nervous. Yeah. There's no certainties. Yeah. It's, it's always emotional, and it's obviously very emotional now. You've got to pinch yourself sometimes when you look out there and you see that horse going around. Very much so. We're lucky to be here at this time, really, aren't we? We're, I think we're all privileged to be here today to see him, and we hope he goes to Japan. In the emotion of the moment, Nick, have you got any news on that? Not at this point of time, Pete. We won't know it'll about Monday, but, uh, yeah, thank God for him. I think I'll let you go. I think you've said it all. Thank you. A very emotional Nick Moraitis. No doubt Jimmy Cassidy will be full of emotion too, Johnny Leeds. Yes, Pete, and Jimmy, we were just talking. We said you were saying the further this horse goes, the better he gets. Yeah, it's the way Brett rides him work and the way he's trained. All credit to the boys, they do all the work. I just come out and fix it, fix it up race day, mate. Yeah, Jimmy, you know, today, when you do the two gate, I thought, you know, he's got to step, doesn't he? Got to get away. But he begun better today than I've seen him begin. He did begin nice today and, gee, Letty, all he wants to do is relax a little bit now. When they, when they let him lead a length, all he wants to do is go to sleep. Well, you went out the straight and I thought, you, surely you're not going to take the jockey's percentage, but we're riding this. Mate, I'll take every cent I can get at the moment. <laughs> but, Jimmy, how good is he? The best you've ever ridden? Good enough to take on the world, mate. I think you'll take on the world. I think you'll beat him. And, uh, I think you're dead right. And I, and I don't think they've got any chance of getting you off him in Japan, have they? A million to one. <laughs> good luck, Jimmy, to Thanks. you and the great horse. Thanks, Johnny. Good, Jimmy. John Letts with the pumper, Jimmy Cassidy, and here he comes back to scale now. Let's just pause and listen and soak up the moment. And remember the day we saw one of the great champions of the Australian turf. For once, in an industry that really owes its existence to betting, betting doesn't mean anything now. Those tote figures, a dollar ten and a dollar, they really don't mean that much because we've had the opportunity of paying our way in the gate today and those of you sitting at home on television around Australia and watching a horse that you can tell your grandchildren about. It is a wonderful moment. He's about to come back into the mounting yard here at Flemington. 
the same steps he took just a little over 12 months ago when he won the Foster's Melbourne Cup. Since then, he's won the Cox Plate. And look at the crowd just thronging around him just to get a glimpse, maybe to take a photo. And they will be talking about him for as long as he's racing and long after he's stopped. Oh yeah, he is number one. And listen to this. Not much more I can add. All I can say is Martin Power and Jimmy Cassidy, thanks for giving us a moment we're going to remember.